What the f So here is the car, the SCR Altima. As you can see, it needs a scuff and spray. Um, it ain't perfect, but I'll tell you what, big risk, big reward, I'm doing it for you guys, just as much as I'm doing it for me when I bring you something interesting. So I gotta come back, I'm about 20 minutes away from home. I gotta come back over here with my Escalade and my Dolly. I just realized my dolly is totally crammed into my backyard with a bunch of stuff around it. Ah, jeez. So I'll be back here late tonight with my dolly, and I'm going to have to push that thing up on it. Wish me luck with that. And uh, get it home. All right, there it is back there. Whoa, and there I am almost going off the road. The car's in pretty good shape overall, except... I ruined it, putting it on my dolly. I thought for sure it was gonna clear it. Uh, it didn't, and I broke the front bumper uh, where it goes across, clean off. So now I gotta fix that, which is a giant pain in the neck. The car's on there, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, looking forward to starting to fix it up, start by getting it running. So I'll show you more when I get back to my shop. All right, so here is something that most of my viewers would probably never expect to see on my channel, let alone on my trailer or dolly. This is a 2006 Nissan Altima SER. And I wasn't really looking for one. I was just looking for any inventory at this point. I'm sure many of you have heard, if you watch other YouTubers that do what I do, that are car dealers, car flippers, whatever, I'm sure you've heard at least some mention of what's going on right now with used car prices at auction and really on the private market as well. They've been through the roof, way too high, abnormally high, and I've been trying to find anything at a somewhat decent price. Cars that would normally pay $300, $200 for are selling for $1,000 at auction or private sale so this came up on my radar today for sale by another dealer another dealer that has a massive lot full of cars like these projects he's never gotten around to his kids were involved in the business it was a family business and he had his kids out buying cars too uh, over the past few years so the kids got out of the business and this was one of the kids purchases this ser no surprise he bought it from the carmax back lot auction the little auctions that carmax has with the vehicles they get that they buy from private sellers you know i'm sure everybody's heard of the carmax appraisal you bring your car in they'll buy it from you that's what they do with the cars most of the time unless it's something pretty nice pretty new the kind of stuff they sell but if it isn't, they will throw it in the back. So I don't know what he paid for this originally. I'm guessing I probably got a better deal than what he paid for it because when he bought it over a year ago, it was a run and drive and it had good paint. But you can see the roof has faded. This vehicle has been sitting for over a year. Like I said, the kids got out of the business, never did anything with it. And Pops finally said, okay, uh, we need to get rid of these cars. So I bought this from this other dealer dealer to dealer transaction for 1100 bucks uh you know typically i wouldn't like to pay that much for a vehicle like this especially from another dealer however i feel like it was still a pretty good deal and let me tell you why the ser is a rare vehicle what the ser is it's an altima it's got the 3.5 liter which plenty of altimas had but it's got some other goodies to it like these nice wheels a nicer interior some of these body effects the horsepower is like 260 and they bring good money uh, they bring a lot more money than just a standard Altima uh, you'll typically see these listed between four and six thousand with this mileage and again they probably sell somewhere in the lower end of that oh, four thousand what they're actually selling for 
this one and you can i know it's not so easy to tell here with the dim lighting of the evening and that's why i'm going to make this introduction here pretty quick because i'm going to show you the car tomorrow but i just wanted to show it here on the dolly and kind of explain how i ended up with it this one's a clean title but i can tell it's been in an accident before um a major accident no i don't think so because it still has the original struts in the front uh, most of the steering components are original this size had a control arm replaced and you can tell this fender is a replacement fender it's got rust already the paint doesn't match at all the bumper not even installed properly the headlight tab is broken and the front bumper did not have any damage until uh until me uh what have i not mentioned yet so it's a clean title ninety-six thousand miles needs paint doesn't need it desperately a lot of this is just dirt and there's actually a lot of wax residue somebody waxed this thing at some point but the one thing i was checking on it because it was a non-runner that's how i got it so cheap according to this guy his son bought it was driving it around for a while uh and then one day it wouldn't start and he left it sitting there this thing had flat tires it'd been sitting there for a while so i brought starting fluid with me when i went to look at it i was the first person to see it because believe me, this thing would have been gone. Uh, I got over there pretty much an hour after they posted it. And it was late in the day. And they're like, oh, you know, can we show it to you tomorrow? I'm like, no, nah, you can show it to me today. And I went out and looked at it, brought starting fluid, gave it a squirt, and sure enough, it fired right up. Without the starting fluid, it would not. Fuel issue, spray in starting fluid, fires right up. And I know a lot of people are going to run down in the comments right away. I want to stop you before you do. No timing issue. Uh, it's fairly common with these V6, these 3.5s, the VQs, to have timing chain issues. You'll hear chain noise on a cold start, or you'll hear tapping. Uh, this was about as cold of a cold start as you could get, because, again, this thing had been sitting for over a year. Uh, the battery is stone cold dead. Uh, and I was there, we put the booster on it, uh, and again, when I did hear it run, I did it several times with the starting fluid, no knocking, no tapping, no chain noise, so the engine's healthy, I don't know about the transmission, obviously couldn't keep it running long enough to put it in gear and drive it, uh, I took their word for it, hoping that they'll be honorable toward me as a fellow dealer, they told me that it did drive, and at 96,000 miles, when this had, this doesn't have a CVT, this has the older five speed uh, automatic. I'm guessing it probably is okay. But with the margin I have on this vehicle, again, these selling, easy selling for four. And I'm into it for 1100 right now as it sits on my trailer. Uh, you know, I got plenty of wiggle room for repairs, but I'm hoping I don't have to do too many. So I'm thinking it needs a fuel pump. I'm going to do a little bit of diagging tomorrow before I throw parts at it. The good news is it's very easy to put a fuel pump in this car. And it is a fairly common issue on these Altimas, believe it or not. They do have premature fuel pump failure. You add it in with this one, it's been sitting for over a year. And uh, you know, it certainly is possible. But all you do is you pop out the rear seat. You got a little access door for the fuel pump right there. Piece of cake. You could have that thing in and out in 20 minutes. So uh, hopefully at that point, this thing runs and drives without issue. And then I have a choice. I can sell it the way it sits. Or I can put a little bit more elbow grease into it and really extend my margins. Now obviously, if I don't fix it up, I just get it running. I could probably sell it for... I don't know, 2200 2500 just because again it is a ser with new tires you can see i got some cosmetic work cut out for me that's for sure and those rotors may need to be resurfaced too from it sitting so let me get it off the dolly and we'll deal with this more tomorrow So I'll tell you what I find a bit interesting, and certainly it can never be this simple. You notice how that fuel gauge is flat empty? You hear it cranking over, by the way. You know, it's a nice, it's a good crank, nothing weird going on in terms of timing or anything like that. But you can see, 
thing supposedly has no gas. Part of me is a little tempted to just go get a gas can and fill it up through a gallon in this thing and see if it starts. All right, so sure enough, this was completely out of gas. Uh, not the reason though that it's not starting. I've tried a few times here. I've got it out of the red zone now. Now I've got it slightly above E. You know, it should start. If that was the issue, that it didn't have enough gas in it. But as you can see, still no start. I did a quick fuse check. Should have done that first, but it's almost never the case. And sure enough, that's our 15 amp fuse right there for the fuel pump, not blown. So I think she just needs a fuel pump. All right, so it's the next day. I didn't want to wait for a fuel pump to come from, say, Amazon. You know, a cheapo one for 40 bucks. They had plenty of them. And I wasn't going to buy one at the auto parts store because they were 300 plus dollars. So I came down to my local yard as I always, and boy, oh boy, did I get lucky today. We got an 06 Altima here. It has a brand new fuel pump in it already. So I've got the fuel pump 15 amp fuse out. I'm gonna crank this over to relieve any pressure there may be. I don't think there's gonna be any, but it takes a second. Now that's got a battery in it. And then you can see I've already got the back seat out. Gonna pop this little cover back off. It takes only a second and uh, change out that pump. There is no doubt in my mind at this point that this thing needs a fuel pump. Just take a look. First of all, how rusty this pump is and the fuel coming out, awful. You can see all these wires are all chafed and falling apart. Uh, some of the plastic that holds the little leveler there for the sending unit broke right off as soon as I touched this. This pump is toast. This is the original pump, no question. But look at the fuel coming out, it's like coffee. So this pump is done for sure. You can see the wire insulation there, the, the little braid around the wire falling off. Look at how corroded those connections are. Uh, there's several reasons why this pump probably isn't working. But you know, now we got a new issue we're gonna have to take care of, which is, oh, look at that coming out. Look at that, like coffee. Look inside that tank. I think this vehicle's been sitting for a few more years than the uh, seller told me it had been sitting. They said it was half for a year, but I looked at the title that he got from CarMax and uh, he got this car in 2016. So it's been sitting for a while. I want all this nasty fuel out of this tank. I have a siphon pump. I'm gonna siphon it out, clean out whatever's left in there. You can see there's all kinds of junk in there. Jeez, a little more involved than I was wanting it to be. But we know for certain this needs to be done and that should take care of our issue. All right, take a look at what I'm pumping out of this tank. It's not what gasoline's supposed to look like. Been sitting for a very, very, very long time. Well, now it's starting to get a little more clear, but still, because I put a few gallons in it last night, because this thing was flat empty. It must've just had water in it. Kind of makes me worried as to why this was sitting so long. Maybe it's got a mechanical issue. All right, so it took me quite a while, but you can see I cleaned out the tank entirely. I had my transfer pump. I had to stick the hose all the way back into the tank and get all that rusty water out. I'm throwing in the new fuel pump now. I'm gonna run over to the gas station, grab a couple gallons to throw in, pick up some sea foam, dump it in just to kind of stabilize the fuel in case there's anything I missed. But again, I got in there with the camera and checked. It looks like I got everything, but you never know what's in the fuel lines as well. All right, I just put two gallons of premium in and before anybody says, why premium? It says right on the fuel filler door, premium fuel for this particular vehicle. I'm gonna have to prime this a few times. Obviously I put the 15 amp fuse back in for the fuel pump. Everything's hooked up. God knows how many years it's been since this thing has ran. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> now we're talking. She runs. 
Oh, thank goodness. That was it. Fuel pump. She runs. Oh, <laughs> it's getting a little nervous there, but it kept cranking. No smoke. I didn't hear, just like when I did starting fluid, I didn't hear any timing chain noise. Oh, we do have a check engine light. Or do we not? No, we don't. Low washer fluid. No check engine light. You gotta be kidding me. At least not yet. I don't hear any chain noise, like I said. No, this thing is quiet. This thing is super quiet. You would hear it. I mean, when these timing, when these timing chain guides start getting tired and these things start slipping around, you hear it, you know it. This thing runs beautiful. So now the big question is, does it shift? Because it's a Nissan, so everything is a factor. We know it runs, it runs well. And when I get more clean fuel in this thing and some sea foam, it's gonna run even better. The question is, does it shift? The fluid looks old. It looks like it's never been changed. Doesn't smell burnt, still has that sweet smell, but it's more brown than it is pink. Oh, what a relief, huh? What a relief. Okay, I, I can't, I can't wait any longer. Are we gonna find out? This thing drives. And if the air works, that would be fantastic if the air works. You can tell I put two gallons and it wasn't much. That's all I had for a gas can. All right. AC on. Uh, it seems good so far. It seems like it's blowing pretty cool. Got good oil pressure, good voltage. Again, no check engine lights. I don't think this AC works though. No, unless it's gonna take in a minute. No, I know the windows work. I tested them last night. So let's get those down before I die in this black on black car. I mean, I'm just happy it's running, you know, AC or not. All right, we're in reverse. It moves. Okay, good start, good start. Where's my gas can? I might have ran that over. Put her in drive. We're in drive. Okay, we're moving. The big question will be if it shifts. We'll see how honest this guy really was that I bought it from because he said he was driving it. I think he went the second there. Yeah, the brakes actually work fairly well. I know it's got good pads on it, but the rotors, uh, and they got a lot of rust, obviously, from sitting. Yeah, we just we just shifted the second there, so we know we got first through second. Do I have my card? I should take this. You know what? I gotta take this thing right to the gas station. I'm not even waiting. Oh, this is fast. Shift. Shift. It shifts. <laughs> Woo! And it shifts well. It shifts really well. No hesitation. No thumping into gear, it shifts as it should. You, know, you see the way that duck case was driving? Probably didn't see it because I suck at filming. Oh, this thing runs and drives great. And it's fast. Holy hell is this car quick. 260 horse, you feel every freaking one of them. This is pretty sweet. I got good, I got flat spots in the tires, that's for sure. No check engine light. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, that's the thing about the car business. You gotta take risk, you know? This one seemed real risky. I kinda had bad feelings about it, but I've been wrong before. I took the gamble based on what these things sell for in working order, and I'm sure as hell glad I did so far. I'm especially impressed with the drivetrain. No timing chain noise. Uh, and again, the transmission's working beautifully in this thing. This is a fast car. It really is. It's a lot of fun to drive. Uh-oh, you guys know what I'm starting to think now. Maybe I should keep this one around. <laughs> I can't keep them all. Uh, the AC does not work. But again, how can I even be upset? You know, I got everything else working so far. I can deal with a little AC recharge or, you know, whatever else it may need. A compressor changed out, but 
This thing drives fantastic. All right, here it is at Warm Idle. Back from the gas station. At one point, it almost wanted to stall out, but then it's been fine ever since. It must have got a little something that was in the fuel lines, the fuel filter, and it, and it burned it up. So, running great now, nice and quiet. No timing chain noise whatsoever. And the oil in this thing, which I'm gonna change anyway because of the age, and I think someone might have overfilled it. I mean, obviously you wipe it, you check it. It's a little over the full line, but you can see, uh, nice and clean. So, despite it being cosmetically beat, someone took care of it, uh, at least mechanically, because, you know, again, no chain noise, clean oil, transmission works great, all the air fluids, the coolant is perfectly clean in this thing. Couldn't ask for a better outcome. And look at the brake rotors. They're already cleaning right up. I might not even have to resurface them. No misfire whatsoever. Zero misfire. I mean, it's unbelievable. Look at this. Idling perfect. No check engine light. Look at the washer fluid low. sounds pretty badass I'm not gonna lie all right so I'm just down here changing the oil on the SER it looked very clean but like I said this has clearly been sitting for a long time you can tell by the cobwebs and obviously what came out of the fuel tank so uh, you know obviously the oil is no good anymore so but you know the good news is I don't see anything weird coming out of the oil pan uh, these Altimas have a lot of issues, but if you get one that's been well maintained, they can actually last quite a while. Uh, and this one, I, I don't know, I'm on the fence about it because a lot of things look pretty good and some things don't. But it looks like this oil pan may have already been dropped. You can see, uh, I don't, unless that's the way they do them from the factory. You guys know I don't do the Japanese cars that often, but that's a pretty hefty gasket or, uh, yeah, it's definitely gasket material. So I'm not sure, maybe this has been dropped before because A, it doesn't leak a drop of oil, the oil pan, and B, again, I, it doesn't look factory to me the way that gasket is so thick. Uh, I could be wrong because the reason I mention that is I know these Altimas have issues with the pickup tube getting clogged uh, and causing low oil pressure. Now this one's got very good oil pressure and I imagine it will be even better with fresh oil, but again, the good news was the oil was clean, so it shows somewhat decent maintenance and it wasn't totally black so all is well but i really can't stand the way this thing looks it's 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 a heap on the outside you've got one chrome tacky mirror cover and one that's not on the mirror and lots of clear coat issues so you can see somebody had racing stripes on this thing at one point and they're pretty baked on there. Now I'm sure a professional detailer could get those out. You can see I just quickly compounded the right side of the hood just to temporarily give this thing a little more shine because I, I like I said, I can't stand the way it looks. It looks like a piece of junk, uh, but you can see pretty nice difference already. I'm gonna continue on this hood, compound the rest of it. I'll hit this fender again, just to make it look better for now. And the roof and that door it's not going to take me very long. Maybe there, maybe there are 20 minutes and it'll make me feel better about the way the car looks. And I'll do those headlights too. And I may even try to just screw in the piece of the bumper that I broke. All right, so here she is all cleaned up the best I can get it without going crazy. And I think this is the way I'm going to sell it. I've been driving this around for a few more days now. It's still doing great mechanically. But at the same time, I'd rather just pass on a good deal to somebody else instead of investing too much time in this thing, um, going crazy, changing fenders, changing bumpers, painting it, because there isn't too many entry-level examples of these SCRs that are in kind of rough cosmetic shape like this one. And I'm sure there's somebody out there that would rather just have one in this condition. They want the car with the power and they'll worry about fixing it up cosmetically later, but they want to get in at a cheaper price. And I'll still make good money, but time is money at the same time. And if I can just spin this thing, make a good profit on it as is, and again, somebody's able to get in on an SCR cheaper, it's a win-win for everybody versus me taking the time to repaint the car, 
change all these panels and uh you know then the seats are still torn the pot the gauge pods still cracked so i think it's just time to let it go i want to move on to something else but here she is i think it cleaned up pretty nice considering the condition of the paint a lot of it's actually in very good condition you know you have certain areas but the car still looks great even even with the clear coat issues i mean you look at it it still looks good it's a good looking car uh, i'll definitely miss it but i think it cleaned up pretty good considering the minimal effort i put into the detail job just a quick compound on that hood brought it back to life a little bit the headlights cleaned up decently the bumper is gorilla taped together but i feel like anybody that buys this vehicle who wants it for what it is is going to want to put on an ser bumper or something else aftermarket they don't want to have the se bumper on there so i don't think that's going to bother anybody too much but for now at least it looks semi-decent until whoever buys this vehicle can get the bumper that they want for it i think the highlight in this vehicle is the interior and obviously the drivetrain you know low mileage and good working order and the interior for the most part really isn't that bad i mean typically these seats have big tears right in the middle of them you got a little tear on the side there a little tear right there and it's starting to peel up down here but really this is pretty minor this can be fixed uh creatively i suppose or maybe even put a little bit of tape and keep it from getting any worse but if you're not looking for the tears you don't really notice them and you know the leather the dye is cracking a bit up here but that's very very easy to fix if somebody wants to most of the ser's i see have worse seats than these so again i think that's a plus they're not so bad and the interior overall the dashboard's in pretty nice shape i didn't shine this interior up or anything this is exactly how i got it it's nice that it had the protective covers and the carpet and the carpets are actually very clean and of course you've got your ser pedals down there and the gauge pod which it does have some cracked plastic i actually made it worse uh this area right this area right here wasn't cracked and i touched it and it broke go figure but somebody can take this apart glue it back together and make it look a little bit better and this piece right here is somewhere in the car i remember seeing it when i was going through this thing so somebody can glue that back on as well but otherwise the interior is in pretty nice shape the headliner everything like that the door cards uh, again, definitely worse ones out there. And I think for somebody to get into the SCR community, probably half price, which is, you know, what I'll be selling this thing for. I figure I'll sell it somewhere in the 2000s. Because again, if you want a real nice one, you're going to be anywhere from four to $6,000. So this one is good mechanically, could use a paint job and all that. I'll probably list it for 2,500. I haven't really decided yet. Again, this isn't really my market. I'm usually dealing with General Motors vehicles, and I know the prices of those off the top of my head, exactly what I need to list them for, how long it'll take to sell them, etc. This car, I'm not so sure. You know, I know there's a big enthusiast following for these cars. I could have a million guys that want this thing tomorrow, or, you know, it may be tough to sell because of the cosmetic condition. And if I find that's the case, then maybe I'll revisit the idea of painting it. But I'd rather get rid of it now I'm into it with the fuel pump and the purchase price and everything for, I don't know, 1250 or something to be conservative, probably less. I paid 1100, the fuel pump cost me 27. That's all I've put into it. And obviously, you know, a few hours pumping out the bad gas and doing the quick detail on it. So let's say I'm into it for 1200 bucks. If you want to value my, my labor of what I did on it, let's say I'm into it for 1200 bucks. I don't think I've done anything else to it. I haven't. So. You know, if I sell this thing for 2500 it's a good quick profit, and that lower price point for a cheap SER should move it quickly. Versus, again, I start putting a lot of labor into this thing, trying to get the body right with all these little dings all over it, you know, because I'm not going to paint it with all those dents. I'm not going to leave this fender on. All the body work this thing would need just to have the paint job look decent. Going to need the new front bumper. Uh, the rear deck lid's got a dent in it. You do all that, I don't know, for what? To get maybe an extra thousand bucks for it after all that time and the money spent on the bodywork and the paint job. I don't think it's worth it. So that's where I stand on it. I know I've been back and forth on what I was going to do with it throughout the video, but you know, I, I, I didn't need to rush to sell this thing. I wanted to make sure I was going to make the right decision as to going about fixing it up. But I think I've done all I need to do to sell this thing for a good profit in a quick amount of time. Threw the fuel pump in it, 
changed the oil, made sure everything was in good working order, uh, recharged the AC, which is blowing cold. Woo, that is hot. This engine bay is actually pretty clean. I'm guessing it was detailed at the same time as the interior by the auction it came from originally. Um, so again, I, I think it's ready to go. That's the way I feel about it. I'm gonna list it today. I already took the pictures. And it's got new front tires on the front. I mean, they're a few years old, but they're in good shape. They're not dry rotted or anything like that. And the rear tires are hand cooks and they've got probably like 65% tread. So it's got good rubber on it. The brakes, you know, from driving this thing, they've cleaned up great. Uh, they're working perfectly. There's no pulsation. So I didn't have to do anything with the rotors, which was good. And the brake pads have plenty of meat on them. Oh, I put a battery in it and I got this at the junkyard for 30 bucks. So again, I'm into it for about 1200. Let's call it that. You know, if, if you want to include the gas of going to pick this thing up and everything like that with my Escalade. So 1200 bucks, you know, if I sell it for 2,500, I think that's a pretty good profit, a pretty quick flip. Time to send it down the road. Let me know what you guys think of the car and how it came out. I know a lot of you were nervous about this. I know these vehicles can be very problematic. I don't know what work this one's had done in its previous life. Perhaps it's already had the timing chains and things addressed. Um, but as of right now, everything's working as it should. The transmission, the engine. So uh, I think it's time to let it go. So thanks for watching, guys, and keep an eye out for the next one.